You're shopping for a new external hard drive and presented with the following options. Which one would you choose? Chances are, you probably selected option 1. Although it may seem like you made this choice completely on your own, you were in fact influenced to make this decision. When it comes to online environments, the user interface is presented in such a way to nudge people to make certain choices. Join us as we take a visit to City University of Hong Kong to talk with Dr. Christoph Schneider and his research on digital nudging. Digital nudging is the use of user interface design elements to guide people's choices and effectively to help the users make better choices. So with any choice made online, the user interface actually becomes a digital choice environment and the design of that digital choice environment influences the choice the user makes. Why is that? Well, as humans, we face cognitive limitations. We just don't have the mental capacity to really deliberately think about every particular option. And a lot of times, our thinking is influenced by different heuristics and biases. In order to test how these heuristics and biases influence behavior, Schneider's colleagues from the University of Liechtenstein conducted a series of different studies testing the effects of digital nudges on user choices and behaviors. The wide-ranging presentation of choices available on crowdfunding platforms made it the perfect context in which to test digital nudges. The scarcity effect is kind of interesting because as an option is perceived as being more scarce, it actually becomes more attractive in a person's mind. So in the context of crowdfunding, what my colleagues did is they presented some rewards as being more scarce and actually significantly more users tended to choose that reward. You see that mechanism actually in action when you go to hotel booking sites where suddenly you see that some hotel rooms are in short supply with only five more rooms available which then makes that option more attractive and pushes the user towards choosing that option. Next, we looked at the decoy effect. A decoy is an option that normally no one would choose, but that actually makes another option look more attractive. So just by adding a decoy reward next to our preferred reward, we could actually shift people's backing behavior so that significantly more people chose our preferred reward. The middle option bias refers to people's tendency to choose the middle option of several sequentially ordered options. So if you have different options at a low, medium and high price point, people tend to neither choose the cheapest options nor the most expensive options, but tend to go for the middle option. Interestingly, we observed that effect to persist even when we shifted the scales, even as the different price points became more expensive, people still tended to select the middle option. So of course, what that means is that a designer, if your preferred option is say option A, you would place two different options at a price point above or below your preferred option to steer or guide users towards selecting that particular option. So what steps should designers take before building an interface for a choice environment? The first step is to understand your own goals, to be clear about your organization's goals and what you want to achieve in a particular choice situation. Next, of course, you want to understand the user and you want to understand for that particular choice situation what heuristics or biases might be at play. The third step, once you're clear about your goals in that particular choice situation and the heuristics and biases that may be at play, you need to design the nudge. You need to think about how to actually implement that particular nudge to achieve the desired effect. Obviously, the idea is to ultimately help our users make better choices. 
Learn more in the July 2018 Communications of the ACM in the contributed article, Digital Nudging, Guiding Online User Choices Through Interface Design.